And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. From the shotgun, here's Dobbs. He's going to let this one go deep. So they took a shot there on third down, couldn't get it. Now it's four. I think the punter might start to get into a pretty good rhythm here if he keeps getting opportunities. But that's the last thing his team wants to have happen, right? The last thing you want to see is your punter feeling pretty good because he's out there all the time. Yeah, first quarter only, but they're 0 for 2 on third down conversions to start this thing. And good hustle here as this is going to be blown dead right at the nine-yard line. Now this Broncos offensive unit ready to head back out onto the field. And Charles, if the season ended today, and it's not going to, we still have December Yay, left. More we're, football. <laughs> we're only in November. Uh, but they would be a wild card team. And that's great. They'd be in the playoffs, but you know they're trying to bump up to be one of those division leaders. That guarantees you at least one home game in the playoffs, and that's what you're really seeking. But there also isn't much margin for error for this team, right? Because right where they're sitting, a two-game losing streak could have them out of the playoffs, so they've got to make sure they continue to keep the momentum going. Absolutely. There's some sharks smelling blood in the water behind them. Second down, it's Bell. And some room for him there as he'll take this up to about the 15. Seven yards on the carry, make it third and four coming up. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. Keenum now to throw. Got him in. He finds Sanders. Keenum to Sanders for the Denver first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. First down, the play going for 15 yards. Obviously, a big play was needed. And you can see his eyes light up as he realized there's absolutely no one in front of him. And he takes off and goes, and goes a long way. Not only does he pick up a first down, but a big gain to boot. Now a first down carry by Bell. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Double this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat? And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. Keenum throwing on second, buying time to his left. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away, and now it's third. So I like that right there. Not only was it the right play, throwing it away like that, frankly, I think it was the only play. Yeah, got outside of the pocket, realized he had nothing, just chucked it free. Yeah, lived to fight another down, right? An incomplete pass on second down. It muddles things a little bit here. This is third and ten. Watch 
17 yards for the Broncos there as they've got themselves a first down. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 47. They'll go back to the ground with Bell. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Vic Beasley able to make the tackle. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker, and what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Keenum. And he'll find Sutton on the right side complete. He'll get it to the 40. Broke a tackle there to get some extra yardage. The reception good for seven. It's third down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam hey, go, going. Go, go. So two of two on third down conversions on this drive, and now they face a third and three here. They'll pitch it out to Bell. He went backwards five yards there on third down to break up fourth. I wonder if they just kind of outguessed themselves a little bit trying to run it on third down. Probably should have gone to the air to try and pick it up. Instead, the punting unit will have to run on the field. So on trots the field goal unit, and wow, this is going to be a challenge here. This will approach NFL record territory. It's a 62-yard attempt. And McManus able to put it through. And, Charles, when you start talking about NFL kickers that have hit from 62 or further, it's a pretty short list, isn't it? That it is. But how about the trust by a head coach to even let your kicker try from that range? That's really showing a lot of faith that he can get the job done. Yeah, faith and guts. And as we see so frequently here in Colorado, that one over the end line. So it'll come out to the 25. The Steelers' offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. They've had it twice. they punted twice, not the start they were hoping for. Not at all, and let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice, so they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? Room here to run! And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A big run there, 29 yards and a first. Sometimes those lines that are drawn on a grease board or in a playbook, they come to life <laughs> out on the field, don't they? And we just saw down that outside handoff to the right. That right tackle, he gets excited for that call, doesn't he? He does, because he just wants to dominate his guy and say, listen, I was the point of attack. I took care of business. That's why you're able to get downfield and add all those yards to your total. Yeah, really nice game there. This is Freeman. And able to push forward for right around three yards down to the 42. I think you mentioned in the opening drive that these guys needed to establish the run, protect the young QB. I actually wrote that down, believe it or not. So how would you assess things so far? I'm kind of touched that you actually wrote something like that down. <laughs> I appreciate that, partner. But I do think they've been able to do that. Maybe not as effectively as they've wanted to. But I think we'll see more of as this game goes along because they want to continue to take care of that young QB. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. It's a gain of five, and that'll make it third and one. Now 
Dobbs. But it's brought in by Washington. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Two minutes to go here in the first half. Back to Denver right after this. Hustling up to the line of scrimmage. Wow, that ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up and avoids the turnover. Von Miller in there to sack him, and that is ten for him now on the year. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it, but it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. Here's Dobbs to throw. He rifles one that's intercepted. Sewell Cravens with a pick. And this return is going to be halted right around the 28-yard line. Well, it's third and long, and you've got a few different ways to play it offensively. But this is not the type of offense that's going to wave the white flag. They're going to keep chucking it. And this time, it results in an interception. They'll start the drive with a carry by Bell. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 to mark him down at the 39. That one going for a gain of 11 and a Bronco first down. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first yeah. down with that run. into enemy territory. Give him 14 yards there and a Denver first down. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. things off yeah able to extend that lead and you always say it that can totally change the complexion of half number two yeah it changes your morale changes your outlook but even before that let's see if they decide to kind of squib kick or what they're going to do on the kickoff because you don't want to give up a big play right before the half ends good point the Steelers offense now they head back onto the field and from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it and I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. He's going to go for a big play downfield. And nearly picked off. 
Surprising to see a defender of his caliber let it get away, but it does get away and it's second down. So with one second left in the half, on is the field goal unit. And supreme confidence in the kicker turns to supreme failure. Is that And okay, so much for our halftime break. Apparently we're going to get right back to it. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Here comes the Broncos offensive unit here as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? I mean, they score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, you feel like you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, the cheater in right there. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. They need to stop to get back into this game, and here's one right to start the third quarter. Yeah, anytime you go to the lockers with that two, three score deficit, you're right. You need that stop, get the football back, and they've done just that. Series to series, play to play. Hey, go, Roger. Keenum to throw on second down. He's got it, the tight end, Jeff Hireman. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. The Broncos on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and ten. From the gun, here's Keenum. And he's going to have the hook up to Sutton. The Bronco first down there, 12 yards on the play. But give the defensive guys a little bit of credit. They didn't let the deep ball beat them on that play, did they? No, the, the drag, that guy can be your safety valve. We saw it right there. Yeah, and it picked up a first down for them, too. Now they'll try to sweep with Bell. And he's got room. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. A big hitter there, a first down gain of 26 yards. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 34. Shotgun snap for Keenan. And that's complete to the tight end, Hireman. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. The completion good for three, and it's second down. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. to his right. And yeah, this is caught. A spectacular one-handed grab there. That'll put him at 77 yards receiving for the ball game. It's a first down. What a catch and one-handed and I'm starting to lose my awe about the play and maybe I shouldn't. How much of this is the player? How much of it is the glove? Well, those gloves... They do have a little grip to them, they? Don't get they get a little extra tackiness to them now, and I know the guys in the NFL, the competition committee, some other places, 
They're talking about examining those gloves to see if they're having too much of an effect on the game. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Him a little bit closer. He takes it from the six inside the five to the four. Were you as surprised as I was that they actually ran it on second down there? I thought that they would go ahead and throw it in every situation here. Yeah, they've thrown for three touchdown passes. Now here, I think they probably go back to the air. Yeah, I think so. But ordinarily, second down is when you run your play fake, your play action, show run and throw the ball. Now they brought up third down and have to throw it anyway. Here's Bell. And he'll keep working toward that end zone as he's down to about the two-yard line. Only a yard that time, so now a decision to be made here on fourth and goal. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the left hash, he'll have to cut this at a tight angle. And McManus able to put it through. And the lead now increases to 20 to nothing. So it's an old-school extra point that counts three times. So it's certainly a disappointment they weren't able to get it in the end zone. Yeah, I can just imagine post-game, head coach looking at the box score, 19-yard field goal, grimacing a little bit, but having to realize that at that moment, getting three points was vital. Go ahead and get the points, put them on the board. Time for the Steelers' offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. We'll see what they have up their sleeve. now on second down directly over him and that's complete to Jesse James and he takes it all the way down to the three a big play there on the catch and run 64 yards well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. They'll look to run with Freeman. And this one will wind up with him losing yardage. Back to the four-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. From back at the four, here's second and goal. He's going to get it running right. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. Royce Freeman, his ninth touchdown of the season. And the Steelers are able to cut into that deficit. Solid job up front. Really just a solid job all the way around to get that one in. Yeah, that was well executed, wasn't it? Well blocked, well run. End result, six points. Touchdown. Boswell on now to kick this one away. And on the return, here comes Adam Jones. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. And Denver getting set to take the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. 
It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. They're not easily done. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Tackled by Bradley Chubb, the number five pick in the 2018 draft. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. It's a loss of four. Now third down. Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. The Broncos on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This is third and 11. Out of the gun, Keenum. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. Give him six on the play, and that's going to make it fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. A terrific return there. 27 yards all told. And the Steelers will go on offense here. First and 10. So good starting field position for him here as they come up first and 10. Out of the gun, Dobbs swings it out to the flat for Freeman. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. Four yards on the pickup, and that'll make this a second down. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can Let's fool them and Let's give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. On second down, Dobbs. And that'll be incomplete. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. And if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. And the Steelers on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This will be third and six. Off the play fake, here's Dobbs. Escaping the pressure right. And incomplete, he had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Try it here. He's back to throw. He'll be brought down by the Broncos. It's a sack. Shaquille Barrett in there to get him. And that's sack number 12 for him on the year. The give is to Bell. And a solid run down inside the 30. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. 
Well, that's a pretty good drive starter right there. And I don't know, partner, if you're even thinking about sitting on the ball right now. They may just want to run their regular offense. In plus territory. And, and as an offensive coordinator, you don't want your team to go into a shell, do you? No, you really don't. Because as soon as you take your foot off the gas, it's real hard to put it back on and mash it. Because once everyone's emotions come down, hard to start them up again. So I think you may want to keep them cranking high right here. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Denver score. Le'Veon Bell, his second TD of the game and 16th on the season. And the Broncos will add on to their lead. And now the offense is going to stay out there as the Broncos will go for two. They'll try to run it in with Bell. And he is into the end zone again as he scores both the touchdown and the two-point conversion to extend this lead. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Switzer now to return. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. And the Steelers set to take the field. And last time out, went for it on fourth down, turned it over, gave them great field position, turned it to six points, so they've got to recover here, Charles. It's amazing what one decision can do in the chain of events, right? The decision to go for it on fourth down. Caused all of that. It caused every bit of it, but it showed confidence. Hey, I've got confidence in you guys. Go pick it up for them. Didn't happen. Also showed confidence in the defense. Mm -hmm. They didn't pick up their end of the bargain. <laughs> so now they've got to come back out and start over and rebuild that confidence. He's going to launch this thing. And that's caught inside the 35. And he takes it all the way down to the three. It's a big play there for the Steelers. 65 yards. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can Fire! knock a defense Fire! off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. Let's go! Let's go. They'll run here with Freeman. And he's going to get this back to the three-yard line and no further. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. to throw downs and he's able to get it down to the two yard line just a one yard pickup on the play and that's going to bring up an interesting third and goal they'll try and run Freeman and he gets halfway there down to the one yard line only a yard there so it brings up fourth and goal They'll run for it. It's Freeman. And he'll wind up being knocked back to the three-yard line. Freeman unable to get free here on fourth and goal. And the Bronco defense comes up big. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. Been a very strong performance for them, really, on both sides of the football. The turnover on down is the most recent example, and now, obviously, they're in a great spot here. Yeah, if you're over on the bench right now, you're shaking hands with your teammate, you're hugging them, giving them a little dap. Been a big, big performance for them. Now you just don't get careless. Take care of the ball on the way out. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Second down, here's Keenum. Into heavy traffic and it's intercepted. Picked off by Ryan Shazier. And he brings this one back. It's a pick six for a Steeler touchdown. 
This game's still fairly well in hand, but I think now you, you go conservative, don't you? Go into your shell and just run the football? I think you have to, but you also have to tell your backs, make sure you're really protecting the football because you're going to run into a stacked defensive front, which is why they were throwing the football before, trying to make sure they just get their backs, you know, really beat up in that situation. Now, good luck to them. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Now the Broncos offense, they get set to head back onto the field. Big stop on the turnover on downs to get the football back, and now it's just all about salting this one away. Yeah, just slowly bleed the clock away. Clock's definitely on your side. And, you know, when we talk about analytics in the game, what is this one, the advanced win metrics? Because if you take care of the football here, Bleed the clock down. Were they about 95% chance? Of oh, yeah, it? I'd say 95 or better. I And I know you always say it. Every coach does. It's just protecting the football at this point. Yeah, and knowing that the defensive guys, they're coming after the ball more than they are the person. They want to knock it free. Give them a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. time for a break we'll come back and see this one out after this to throw on second down is Keenum trying to lay one up deep and both guys were there but it falls incomplete Finally, a good play there defensively on the deep ball. The secondary has had its struggles this entire game. Offensively, they've had their way with them. The Broncos on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and eight. A shotgun snap for Keenum. Looking for Sanders here on the deep. And that's caught inside the 35. And all the way home for a Broncos score. Emmanuel Sanders, his second touchdown on the season. And the Broncos will extend their lead. You have fun with this one, partner? I am. I mean, he's been fun to watch under center. We always talk about, you know, getting to the next level, right? When we see people get into the zone, this guy's in the master class right now. What a performance he's putting on, just carving them up. Four touchdown passes, carving them up is right. Seems like everything he throws is going to be a completion and going in the end zone. Switzer now to return. And nice work on the return as he'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They're down big here late. I don't know. You just one last drive here for pride. Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge, and someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's <laughs> get out up. of here and do something <laughs> some other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. First down, downs to throw. He goes underneath to Freeman. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained. So they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He can make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. From the shotgun, here's Dobbs. Flushed out right. This is intercepted. Picked off by Brandon Marshall. I think that interception happened for two reasons. Quarterback gets outside the pocket and panics a little bit. And receiver doesn't make sure he's absolutely in an open spot. So there's a guy lurking, took the ball from yeah, him. Yeah, so don't wave your arms, right, as a receiver if you're not wide open. Got to know that you're open. Otherwise, just don't do it. Keenum wants to throw it. Looking deep for Demarius. Got his man. It's 
Thomas, touchdown Denver. Demarius Thomas with his second touchdown of the game, fourth of the year. And the Broncos turn that interception into a touchdown. McManus's point after is good, and that'll increase their lead to 28. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This is fielded at the goal line. And nice work on the return as he'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Let's just be frank. They're playing for pride at this point. <laughs> that's, that's all that's left because victory, not a chance now. And I can't wait to see how they actually go about doing it because... There are a lot of people watching the body language of the guys on the field now, and if they call plays they want executed, they need to do it. And the Broncos get there and take him down. Shaquille Barrett in there to drop him, and his great season Ohio. continues. 13 sacks for him now on the year. Ohio! Ohio! Dobbs. He's going to let it fly. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off by the corner, Bradley Roby. And they are going to take over right there at the 22-yard line. Now they set themselves behind the chains, tried to get it all back in one play, and it backfired. Didn't it feel like a pitcher working his way into a 3-0 count, right? You're behind. What do your coaches always tell you? Get it back one pitch at a time. In this case, they tried to get it back right away, and it didn't work out. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. Fourth quarter, you've got the big lead. If you're coaching, Charles, you, you still taking shots like that downfield? I'd be a little more concerned with running some clock and making sure you're taking care of the lead because you keep flinging it around, you throw a couple of picks, you can put yourself in jeopardy. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. No, not running. Keenum wants to throw. Going for the deep ball. That'll be incomplete as the clock will stop with 14 seconds remaining. Despite the lead here in the fourth, they're still taking shots. Not content to sit on this lead at all. And to me, it raises the question of what's right in this game nowadays. Do you sit on the ball and run it because you have enough of a lead? Or do you try and extend it because you always feel like the other team can come back? Extend it. Have some fun. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now they'll toss it to Bell running left. And some room to work. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. And what are the whistles for? Timeout. So they'll stop the clock here in a game that's been decided in the closing seconds. Here's Marquette King now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. A big offensive explosion helped leading.